Thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten Son into this world to be not only just the Savior, but the Lord, and to bring to us light light and understanding of you and of your ways that we might be attracted to the light that we might walk in the light even as you are in that light so that we might have fellowship with each other as the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins Lord teach us today of what it is to be born of the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. John records for us here the night visit by Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, who acknowledged that Jesus was from God because of the miracles that Jesus had done he realized that no man could do the things Jesus was doing apart from God's power Jesus declared to him that it was necessary that he be born again but this was an unusual and strange concept which he did not understand and so he asked Jesus what was meant by being born again. When God first created man, God created man a three-dimensional being. Spirit, mind and body man was sort of a inferior trinity he was essentially a spirit but he dwelt in a body and he possessed a consciousness now we're familiar with plant life that's body life in its simple form it grows, it draws nutrients out of the soil and atmosphere and in some cases like the Venus flytrap from insects. It reproduces itself through the genetic code that is found in the seed. And it is a very simple, basic form of life. Beyond plant life, we have animal life, which also possesses a body, but it is two-dimensional because it also possesses a consciousness or a soul. They feed on the plants and they feed on other animals. They are mobile and they reproduce through seed that oftentimes has to be fertilized by the sperm. Because of the addition of the consciousness and mobility, the, an the animal kingdom is a quantum leap above the plant kingdom. Now, man was created as a spirit, a spirit being dwelling in a body possessing a consciousness feeding upon the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom reproducing through the genetic code in the sea seed fertilized by the sperm but because of the dimension of the spirit man has the capacity to understand the existence of God he has the capacity to worship God and because of the spirit of man 
He is a quantum leap above the animal kingdom because of his ability to understand and to worship God. It should be noted, however, that man by birth alone does not know what it is to possess a spirit. Though originally when God created him, he created him spirit, soul, and body, man's spirit died when man chose to live after the body appetite rather than after the spirit. And thus, most people that we know today whose spirit is dead live as do the animals, an animal plane of existence which is evidenced and proven every day on the front pages of your newspapers. When man was first created, he lived in an ideally pure environment, in a strong, healthy body with no genetic defects. His spirit was alive, and thus he lived in conscious fellowship with God. We have that beautiful passage of Scripture so filled with potential that declares an God communed with Adam in the garden. That beautiful awareness of God and living in harmony and in fellowship with God. But there was one question. Did man live in fellowship with God because he desired to live in fellowship with God or was it because there was no alternative? And so, in order to find out if, if man's living in fellowship with God was a matter of choice, desire, God put into the garden a very attractive and appealing alternative. A tree that appealed to the lust of man's flesh. But God, when He placed that tree there, placed also a prohibition upon that tree declaring that to eat of it would have deadly consequences. It would bring to an end man's fellowship and relationship with God. Unfortunately, Adam chose to experiment and to eat of that tree in disobedience to God and in so doing, as God had warned, his spirit died and he lost the consciousness of God's presence and he lost fellowship with God because the spirit was dead. And try as he may, there is no way that man can resurrect his own spirit by his own efforts. Be as good as he can. Be religious. Keep rules and regulations. These things cannot revive or resuscitate the spirit of man that died as the result of man's sin against God. Thus, Man degenerated to the animal plane of existence and his mind now, rather than being occupied with the things of God, his mind is now occupied with the needs of his body. And the chief concerns were, what will I eat? What will I wear? What will I drink? survival became the main issue.
When Jesus said to Nicodemus that unless a man was born again he could not see the kingdom of God he was declaring that you just will not be able to understand nor know the things of the Spirit when your spirit is dead. There's only one way you can apprehend or comprehend the things of the Spirit and that is by having a spiritual birth. You were born once of the flesh. You lived after the flesh. Your mind was occupied with things of the flesh. To know God, to enter into the kingdom of God, to understand the kingdom of God, it is necessary that you be born again. This time, a spiritual birth. Paul, when he was writing to the Corinthians, said, Man does not know the things of God. The Spirit of God knows them. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, of which things we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, but that which is taught by the Holy Spirit, as we compare spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit and neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Paul said they are foolishness unto him. So what Paul is saying is that for us to understand spiritual things it is necessary again to have a spiritual birth. rather frustrating to be born again and to have spiritual comprehension and to try then to share spiritual truths with people who aren't born again. You've all experienced that frustration. You, you think, well, it's so clear. Why can't you see it? What, what's your problem that you just can't see it? And, and to try and deal with a person who is blind to the things of the Spirit is, is an extremely frustrating thing. But the Bible says that you cannot know them because they are only understood by the Spirit. Jesus was basically saying to Nicodemus, You were born once from your mother's womb in the flesh. You've got to be born again in the Spirit. If you want to see the kingdom of God, if you want to comprehend or understand it, you've got to have a spiritual birth. If you want to enter into it, it takes a spiritual birth. Otherwise, you'll never understand it, nor will you enter into it. And so it prompted his question, but how then can a man be born again? By what process? can a man have this spiritual birth? How can these things be? And so Jesus went back to the Old Testament with which he was very familiar. Being a ruler of the Jews, a teacher, he was familiar with the Old Testament and especially the Torah. And Jesus went back to one of the experiences recorded in the book of Numbers. When the children of Israel, there in the wilderness, they began to murmur and complain against God and against Moses, accusing 
God of bringing them out to destroy them in the wilderness. And they said, we're sick of this manna. And so God sent poisonous snakes among them. And the people began to be bitten by these poisonous snakes snakes, and they were dying all over the place. And Moses prayed unto the Lord to forgive them for their murmuring. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a brass snake, put it on a pole in the middle of the camp. And it shall come to pass, whenever a man is bitten by one of these poisonous snakes, if he will look at that brass snake in the middle of the camp there on the pole, he will be healed and he will not die. So Moses made a serpent of brass, put it on the pole, and put it in the middle of the camp. And it came to pass that his people were bitten by these snakes and they were dying as they looked at that brass snake on the pole they were healed they did not die now notice God just didn't heal them he made provisions for their healing but it left the ball in their court they had to look at that serpent on the pole in order to be healed in this there is tremendous symbolism in the scriptures brass is used always as a symbol of God's judgment the brazen altar where the blood of the sacrifices had to be poured in the scriptures the serpent is used as a symbol for sin as Satan came in the garden in the form of a serpent and thus used as a symbol for sin lifted up on a pole that being lifted up became the symbol of the cross. Jesus said, And I, if I be lifted up, signifying how that he was going to die by crucifixion. Even here, Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So in putting the symbolism together, the serpent, the symbol of sin, brass, the symbol of judgment, lifted up the symbol of the cross. You have then sin being judged on the cross. And as you look at the cross of Jesus Christ, if you realize that there God judged your sin, and Jesus experienced the righteous judgment of God for your sin as He died for your sin. Looking then at that in faith, you do not perish as the result of the deadly sin that is destroying you, but you have eternal life. Very symbolic. 